This is the Max Patcher window. This is what you should see when you open a new document in Max. If you happen to open Max and you find something that looks like a whole bunch of big stripes like, uh, like this, um, don't worry, you didn't do anything wrong. This is just the Max console, which we will get to in a second. But um, typically, we use this in a different view. So if you do see this, just go ahead and close it. What we're looking for is this big white area with this kind of dark gray frame around this. And we call this the patcher frame. The patcher frame includes a bunch of useful things that you'll be using throughout your use with Max, and I want to point out some of the most important ones that you need to pay attention to. This top area of the patcher frame is dedicated to creating new objects. The most common object you can create with Max is called a new object, and that is the very first object that you see here. It says object, and then in parentheses it says N, and that's a hint that if you hit N on your keyboard, you're going to actually instantiate that object. You can instantiate these objects by dragging them off the patcher frame, or you can use that key command. And n creates a new object. It's not command n. Command n will create a new, entirely new patcher window for you. But if you want to create a new object, you can just hit the n key, and you're rewarded with this little box that has a little blinking cursor. It's waiting for you to enter some information into it. Max objects have a name, and often they're followed with an argument that describes what the object is going to do. And this is always separated by a space. You don't always need an argument, but if we wanted to instantiate, say, for example, a panel, I would just go ahead and type in panel right into this object box, and it will create it for me. And now I've just created a panel. And you can see that the new object box kind of transformed into this different looking object. And that's true for a lot of different Max objects that are user interface or visual objects. Moving along into the patcher frame, we can see that the next most important object is called a message, and it looks a lot like a new object box. You can see that a new object box is rectangular, and it's got this blinking cursor in it. And if I select this one, this is the message box. If I double click on it, I can start entering messages into this box. These two objects interact with each other quite a bit because you send messages to objects to tell them what you want them to do. The next object is really useful. It's called the comments, and this is going to allow you to add comments or text elements to your patcher window. Uh, this is a comment. And if you want to have text comments, that's cool. There's ways of altering the behavior of this text comment. So for example, if I open up the inspector here, the inspector allows us to change different qualities of the object that is currently selected. So I can change this appearance to a bubble comment, which allows me to point at things. And that's kind of handy. So I'm going to put this inspector away. We'll talk more about this in just a little bit. And then finally, this whole group of objects are all about adding different user interface objects that are very common. Like a toggle gives you state. Like you can turn on and off a toggle with a one or a zero, and it sends a one or a zero. But sometimes you want a stateless message, and that's what a bang is. A bang doesn't have a state. It's just like you click on it, and it's like a trigger. It happens, and it's gone. And then you have number boxes, and there's a number that you can choose from. This is a standard max number box, and it's got a, a variety of different output modes as well. And then we have sliders and dials. So there's quite a menu of, of sliders. So you can invoke these by dragging them. And if you can see, you can invoke it with an S. So if I hit S on my keyboard, I can uh, create a new slider. You'll note that it will create a new object where my mouse actually is. So if I you know, start banging, I can create a you know, whole series of bangs just by moving my mouse and pressing the B key over and over again. Over here on the left-hand side of the patcher frame, this is also a good time to mention that you can pin these back. If you hover over the very middle of the patcher frame area, you can pin this to the sides, and then it kind of disappears like a dock. Over here, the first element I want to call attention to is this audio area. And this is a bunch of included content with Max that is useful for testing. The reason I want to mention this is because you need to be aware that uh, this is not really a scroll bar. It's showing you a range of time and allows you to filter down your selection. So if you just want like really short you know, samples that are under 600 samples, you can be there. And then you can move this down here for just very, very long samples and something in between. You can also preview by clicking on these. And then if you want to use them, you can just simply drag them into your patcher. Moving on, we have the plugins area. And this is where you're going to find audio unit, live devices, and VST plugins. 
And then the beep sidebar allows you to just quickly add oscillators that correspond to our oscillators and, and other types of modular synth modules that correspond to the one volt per octave protocol. On the other side of the screen, we have uh, this little sidecar that opens and closes. The very first thing that I want to show you is the max console. And that can be invoked just by holding down the command key and hitting M, and that will open up the console for you. The console is where you would see diagnostic information or messages about your patch, and that's helpful to have there on the side. But sometimes if you have a, an object selected, like uh, let's make a number box, you want to edit properties of this number box, and that's in the inspector. The inspector can be found under this little I, and it populates this sidebar with all the attributes that are related to the object that you have selected. Be aware that if this is the first time you're opening it, Max often has it open to the basic menu and I typically like to have all selected. The reason I like to have all selected is because I'm not overwhelmed by the number of options depending on the object that's selected. When I, the reason I use all is because of this filtering function up here in, at the top of the window because if I'm looking for a particular attribute all you have to do is just type it in here like maximum and then it's like oh here's the maximum value and I don't have to really go search for it visually I can just have max do the searching for me. Uh, underneath the inspector is the reference. So the reference uh, is also context sensitive. It depends on what object you have selected and it shows you all the messages and attributes that are available for that particular object. Um, if you want more information about an object that you are you know, interested in, you can option click on it and that will bring up the help file for that object. And the help file is like a fully functional max patcher of the object in question. And don't forget there's a whole bunch of tabs here. It's just not this one view. Also, if you are looking for an object that is kind of sort of like the object that you have selected, you can use this question mark menu to find objects that are related to that object um, that aren't exactly that object. And then finally under here is the snapshots area, and you need to use this in order to save the state of your patcher, and uh, that is a very important function in Max. Then down here at the bottom is a volume control for the patcher frame, for the patcher window, and Directly below that is a power button, and this controls your audio engine. So be aware that you can change the volume at any time or turn the audio engine off completely if you use the power button. This strange icon right next to it is the global transport and allows you to start and stop the transport. You can also customize this bottom part of the patcher frame by, by right-clicking on it, and you can add uh, additional elements like uh, solo and mute buttons. Down here is locked and unlocked patchers and presentation mode. There's uh, dedicated information on these functions, but more importantly, there is MIDI mapping, which allows you to map controllers from your keyboard or your mouse to functions up on the screen. Okay, so that's the entire Max interface.